Good morning. Welcome to one and all. Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus. This morning we continue on in this pre-Lent season of the Christian church year. And uh, today's uh, Sunday goes by the Latin title of sexagesima, which means 60. We're roughly, we're about 60 days before our celebration of Jesus' resurrection on Easter morning. And the focus of our worship today is the reminder that, that the victory has been won. Uh, it's been won by Jesus, our Savior, who has done everything necessary for, for our salvation, and the victory is ours through faith in him. So let's uh, join together in the singing of our opening hymn. It's hymn 443, Rejoice, My Heart, Be Glad, and Sing, hymn 443. stand. To guide our worship this morning, we follow the order of service on page 45 in the front part of your hymnal, the service entitled Morning Praise, or it's the ancient order of matins. We begin with the sung responses toward the bottom of page 45. O oh Lord, open my lips. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Praise be to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us worship Him. the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King of all hearts. The deep places of the earth are Is 
hand form the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of Congregation may be seated. Our scripture readings for today speak to us about that victory that Jesus has won, that freedom giving victory that we have in Jesus our Savior. Our Old Testament lesson is recorded for us in the book of 1 Samuel. This is chapter 17, starting here at verse 42. Uh, the, the setting of this is this, that uh, David, the, the young shepherd boy, uh, is going into battle against the champion of the Philistines, that nine, ten foot tall uh, warrior named Goliath. I start here at verse 42, talking about Goliath here. He looked David over and saw that he was only a boy, ruddy and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, am I a dog that you have come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will hand you over to me, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Today, I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. As the Philistine moved closer toward him to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down to the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. David ran over and stood over him. He took hold of the Philistine's sword and drew it from the scabbard. After he killed him, he cut off his head with the sword. When the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they turned and ran. This is the word of our Lord. We continue with our reading from the New Testament. Oh, it's not exactly from the letters of the New Testament. Uh, this morning our reading is from the book of Acts. This is Acts chapter 16, starting here at verse 24. Uh, this is... Uh, during the ministry of the Apostle Paul, and he's with his co-worker Silas here, and they are in the city of Philippi, where the Lord has led them, and they've been preaching the gospel. And uh, then uh, the, the Lord used Paul to drive a demon out of a slave girl, and that started an uproar. And uh, now, now we pick it up here at verse 24 when the jail, they are arrested and given into the, the uh, custody of the jailer. Upon receiving such orders, he, that is the jailer, put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. 
Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in the house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his family were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. When it was daylight, the magistrates sent their officers to the jailer with the order, release those men. This is the word of our Lord. Let's continue now with the singing of the verse of the day in song. You find this toward the top of page two of this morning's bulletin. Uh, this is Jesus himself speaking uh, as we sing this. Please stand now for our gospel reading. The Holy Gospel is recorded for us by John. This is in chapter 8, starting here at verse 25. Here, Jesus had been speaking to the crowds of people who had come to him, and the Pharisees especially uh, came to him to challenge him. Uh, so Jesus Jesus clearly testifies to who he is and he promises that, that through his word he sets people free. I start here at verse 25 in chapter 8. Who are you, they asked. Just what I have been claiming all along, Jesus replied. I have much to say in judgment of you. But he who sent me is reliable, and what I have heard from him, I tell the world. They did not understand that he was telling them about his father. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am the one I claim to be, and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I, am, for I always do what pleases him. Even as he spoke, many put their faith in him. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now, a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of our Lord. The congregation may be seated once again as we continue with our next hymn. 
I think for the sake of time, we're going to omit hymn 574. So let's join together in hymn 431, I Walk in Danger All the Way. At this time, we'll sing the first four stanzas, hymn 431. In the name of Jesus, our gracious Savior, who promises that he is always guiding and directing our footsteps as we walk on that path through this earthly world, fellow people of God. The Lord moves in mysterious ways. That's what the old saying goes. And, uh, you know, we might think that that well-worn sentiment is uh, maybe, maybe kind of trite, but the truth is that it is real and it is true. And we look at some examples in Holy Scripture uh, to, to show this. And I'd like you to think this morning about, about Joseph. Not Joseph in the New Testament, Mary's husband, but Joseph in the Old Testament, the son of Jacob, one of 12 sons of Jacob. And you know, when we look at that account, we have to say that uh, there is, is such a, a sorry string of, of pathetically poor decisions and sinful actions that takes place all around that, the whole incident of, of his ongoing life. You, know, you think, for example, of, of, of Jacob, uh, what he did as his father, he, he picked Jacob as his favorite. 
He picked Jacob, really a poor parenting uh, practice there, uh, but he picked uh, J uh, Joseph as his favorite, and he made that painfully clear to everyone that that was the case. Uh, so he made some, some poor choices there. Jacob did. And then Joseph's brothers made some, some terrible choices themselves because they were filled with resentment, they were filled with jealousy, and they chose to hate their brother to the point that, that they even wanted to kill him. But then you might say some cooler heads prevailed and they decided not to do that, but uh, they decided then that they were going to, to sell him as a slave to this traveling caravan that was going uh, down to Egypt. So that is what they did. They sold their brother as a slave. And then they cooked up this plan. Uh, they, they pretended that that. Joseph had been killed by a wild animal to, to fool their father. And, uh, you know, and then they just, they just continued on with, with this lie. And Joseph went on down to Egypt where he went through all kinds of things. For years, for years, he went through all kinds of struggles. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the difficulties that he had to face had to be incredible uh, for him to deal with. But to make a long story short, and it goes for, for chapters and chapters in the book of Genesis, but to make a long story short, the Lord directed events so that this Joseph became like the, the prime minister of Egypt, second in command only to the Egyptian king, the Pharaoh himself. And God used Joseph to save his family back in the promised land of Israel to save them from starvation. And uh, God uh, used Joseph even to, to, to uh, preserve that family line that God said the, the Messiah, the coming Savior, is coming from this family. And, you know, who would have imagined all of this? Who could have thought that, that all of these things would transpire to carry out God's plan? Or we might think of the one we heard in our Old Testament lesson today, that shepherd boy David who, who went up against the, the uh, Philistine champion warrior and, and the Lord gave him the power to defeat him in battle. And, and people, people were just singing David's praises. And the king of Israel, King Saul, did not like that. He became insanely jealous of David and his popularity. And to the point where, where he hated David so much that he tried to kill David. He tried to, to pin him to the wall with a javelin. But the Lord delivered him from that. And again, to make a rather extended short story uh, shorter, you know, God eventually put David on the throne of Israel. And most people would say David was the greatest king of the nation of Israel. And God even used him to, to write a, a number of the Psalms that are included in the Holy Scripture in the book of Psalms, the hymn book of the Old Testament believers. And God even used him to be the ancestor, one of the ancestors of the coming Messiah. You know, as, as my dad used to say, you know, who would have ever thunk it? Who would have thought that God would, would turn these, these strange events and these odd circumstances to serve his own purpose? Well, this morning, we want to look at another example of that, and it's what's recorded for us in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 16, and we see that that God is still at work here in this New Testament incident. So, so we want to dig into this word of God from Acts chapter 16 as God tells us that the Lord can do his work in the, the strangest of situations and circumstances. And the first thing that we see here is that, that the Lord gave these missionaries, Paul and Silas here, he gave them peace, and, and even boldness despite the, the brutal beatings that, that they received. 
Now, as I said, this, this is the Apostle Paul. He's on his second missionary journey, traveling around the Mediterranean world. And this time, Silas is his, his uh, traveling companion and ministry partner. And uh, so they, they go by the, the specific direction of God. They go to the city of Philippi. And there they proclaim the message of the gospel. They proclaim the good news that Jesus is the world's one and only Savior from sin. And that through faith in him, uh, sins are washed away and, and you become a child of God uh, through faith in this Jesus. And a, a Christian congregation is formed there in the city of Philippi. Later, Paul's going to write a letter to them that we call Philippians, Paul's letter to the Philippians. But, but then opposition arises, especially because the apostle Paul uh, casts a demon out of a slave girl. Let me just read a, a bit of the setting here. I'll start here at verse 16. This is in chapter 16, verse 16. Once, Paul is speaking here, once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God and are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the Spirit left her. When the owners of the slave girl realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews and are, advocate, and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks." Okay, so that's what had happened before the words that, that I had read before. And, uh, you know, Paul and Silas were suffering for the name of Jesus Christ. They, uh, uh, Luke, it's probably Luke anyway, who, who wrote the book of Acts. Luke says here that, that they were stripped and beaten. And then he says they were severely flogged. And then he says they were put in the stocks, which was not just for security, but it was also a, a torture device uh, for those prisoners. So all of these things uh, were going on. But notice how even in these unusual circumstances and in this odd situation, God is still accomplishing his purpose. You know, what were Paul and Silas doing? We don't hear that they're whining and complaining about how tough they have it. Uh, we don't hear that they're groaning and, and uh, suffering from the things that, that they had to endure, although they probably were. Uh, they were beaten. They were severely flogged. These are, are violent terms uh, that are used here. Uh, but what were they doing? Luke tells us, that they were praying and singing hymns to God. Even in this unlikely place, sitting in the prison, sitting in stocks and chains, they were praying and singing hymns to God, and other people were paying attention. Other, other prisoners in the prison, uh, undoubtedly the, the prison keeper himself. 
And it just reminds us, again, that, that God can accomplish his work in the most unusual of circumstances. Let me just give you one example that happened to me. I don't even remember it was, maybe a couple of years ago, something like this. I was uh, in the hospital uh, making a visit. I, I don't remember who it was. Maybe it was one of you. I don't remember for sure. But as I was walking down the hallway, I, uh, I met a man who was walking the other direction, and you know, our eyes met, and we must have said hi. And maybe I said, how, how is it going, or how are you doing, or something like that. And the guy stopped, and he looked at me, and he smiled, this gigantic smile, and he said, things are going great, because my wife just had a baby. And so we continued on the conversation, you know, congratulations and all of that. And, and, uh, and I, I asked him if he, he had a church and things like that. And, and it gave me an opportunity to talk to him about the blessings of baptism for their new baby. You know, and there, there we were, standing in the hall of the hospital. But, you know, who, who would have thought that that would be an opportunity to tell someone the good news about Jesus? Well, here are Paul and Silas, and they, they are, are suffering. You know, I've never, I've never been stripped and beaten, beaten with rods is the term that is really used here, and severely flogged or thrown into, into stocks because of Jesus Christ. And I, I doubt if any of you have either. But it just reminds us that God can still do his work even in the most unusual circumstances. And, and maybe it's even when, when we are in the midst of, of some kind of pain or suffering or sorrow, that it's very possible, it's even likely that other people are watching. And other people are listening and they're, they're observing how we react to, to being in these kinds of situations. And, and that might very well be the opportunity that God is giving to us to tell people the good news about Jesus. Why, why we can be at peace no matter what the outward circumstances might be because we know that Jesus is our Savior and that we have forgiveness in him and we have the certainty of eternal life in heaven. It doesn't matter what the outward circumstances might be. God can still use us to build his kingdom, to bring others to know that good news of salvation in Jesus alone. You know, the, the Lord gave his missionaries here, Paul and Silas, peace and, and boldness even, even after they suffered these, these brutal beatings. Well, the second thing that we learn from this word of God is that, that the Lord gives his, his word power, his gospel has power, even in the, the bleakness of, of dire despair. Now, the, the writer of, of the book of Acts here tells us about what happened when Paul and Silas were in sitting in prison, singing hymns, praying to the Lord, and there is this violent earthquake that shakes the foundations of the, of the prison. And the, the prison doors are blown open, and the chains fall off, and, and the, the prisoners are all free, and when the jailer, the jail keeper, sees that, he knows that he's responsible. And he sees the situation as hopeless. And he's about ready to take his own life. He's about ready to end his own life. But we're reminded that with Jesus, the situation is never hopeless. The situation is never hopeless with Jesus in the picture. And so Paul and Silas here, when they see what the jailer's about ready to do, they stop him and say, don't do it. We're all here. We've not escaped. We could have done that, but we're all here. And, and it's then that the jailer recognizes that these two prisoners 
as miserable as they were probably feeling, they had something that he did not have. And so the jailer asked that, that most important question in the world. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now understand, it's, it's a flawed question, but it, it betrays you know, the, the inclination of the sinful human heart that, that there must be something that I can do to be saved. Must be some way I can contribute to that. But, but Paul and Silas, you know, they, they summarize the message of the gospel with that, that succinct uh, sentence when they say, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. You know, it's only through faith in Jesus who has done it all for us. It's not based on what we do, but what Jesus has done for us. And that's what changed everything for this jailer of the, the prison there in Philippi. Because God the Holy Spirit was working in his heart through that testimony of Paul and Silas to bring him to faith, to bring him to trust in Jesus as his Savior. To, to know that Jesus went to the cross to pay for his sins and that through faith in him, he had the certainty of eternal life in heaven with the Lord. And so Luke, Luke tells us here that the, the jailer took, took them out of the prison and, and washed their wounds and, and fed them a meal. And then he says, immediately he and all his family were baptized. God worked through the power of the word. He worked through the power of the sacrament. And, and he brought those people to faith in Jesus Christ as their Savior. This, the same tools that the Holy Spirit still uses today. The power of the word and the, the power of the sacraments. And here in this, this most unlikely place, in these strangest of circumstances, God did his work. And he, he brought that family out of the darkness of unbelief into the light of faith and salvation, and they were filled with joy. That's the response. That's the response through the power of the gospel. They were, they were filled with joy. That's how our Lord works, isn't it? We can say he, he works in mysterious ways. He works through strange circumstances and, and odd situations. And he can, he can even work through the, the excruciating, painful things that we have to undergo to accomplish his purpose. And that, that's what he did here. He brought this family into the kingdom of grace through faith in Jesus. And even in the, the most dire situations here, he, he led that jailer from, from despair to joy. Joy in knowing Jesus, his Savior. And God the Holy Spirit is still doing that today. He's still doing that through us, his people. So the Lord is urging us to to place our trust in him. Even, even when we are going through those, those dark situations, those painful experiences that we have to undergo, the Lord tells us to put our trust in him and to continue to let the light of our faith shine out as we speak the great things that he has done for us. May the Spirit continue to give us his power. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.
If you would please open your hymnals now to page 41, you'll find there the Apostles' Creed. Let's join together with Christians from around the world and throughout the centuries as we make confession of our Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated. If you'd please open your hymnals now to page 50 in the front part of your hymnal, uh, let's join together in the, the Kyrie at the top of the page, the Lord have mercy. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Lord Jesus, our gracious Savior, you, you have promised that there is nothing in all of this world, uh, no power of this world, no power of darkness that, that can overcome your church. And you have promised that your church will continue to be built until that day when you return in glory. Lord, we ask that you would continue to be with us and that, that you would uh, confirm our hearts uh, by the power of your gospel, that you would strengthen our faith and trust in you so that, that it grows stronger and stronger each and every day. And Lord, we ask that you would use us as your humble instruments uh, to, to be lights in this world of darkness, to shine out with that message of the good news of all that you have done for us, the forgiveness that you won for us by that sacrifice at Calvary and the eternal life that is secure because you have done it all for us. Lord, be with us and bless us as, as we make use of those opportunities that you place before us to, to give witness to your name. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, uh, use that testimony to continue to build your kingdom and to bring more and more to know the, the good news of your saving love. And Lord, confident of your mercies and grace, we also bring our special petitions before you. And Lord, we ask for your, your special blessings on quite a number of people dealing with, with health matters. Uh, we pray for Pastor Mark Guthmiller, for Heather Johansson, for Patty Dreher, who w underwent surgery last Sunday and was released from the hospital on Monday, for Stanley Nelson he's, as he continues uh, cancer treatments, uh, Jeanette Bobzine, who underwent surgery recently. Uh, well, Lord, we also pray for, for those who have been dealing with, with COVID and, and other yeah, issues lately. And Lord, we also pray for Sheila Zareth, uh, Eleanor Temple's daughter, who is scheduled to undergo surgery on Tuesday in Maryland. Lord, we ask for your special blessings upon all of these people. Uh, especially, Lord, we ask that, that you would give peace to their hearts 
and confidence in the, your word of promise. Lord, strengthen them in their faith and uh, Lord, according to your will and your grace, we ask that you would bring strength and healing to their bodies as well. Lord, we commend them all to your loving care. And Lord, we also pray for so many people who have been affected by the, the earthquake in, in Turkey and Syria. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would be with those who are grieving the loss of, of loved ones. We ask that you would be with those who are, uh, are dealing with injuries and, and all, all of the other kinds of losses that are, are happening there. And Lord, we ask that you would use even this time of, of tragedy and sorrow as, as another opportunity so that the good news of your gospel might be proclaimed. And Lord, we also, with that same thought in mind, pray for the, the people of Ukraine in, in this ongoing war. Uh, Lord, again, we ask that you would, even in those circumstances of, of trial and loss and, and uh, difficulty, that, that you would see that your kingdom uh, continues to grow and that your gospel continues to be proclaimed. And Lord, we ask for your special blessings on all of our outreach efforts in, in this congregation, in our tri-parish, and, and all across our synod and your whole church. Uh, Lord, may your gospel boldly go before all of the world. And Lord, we ask for your special blessings on, on so many called workers in, in our uh, district, in our area who are deliberating calls at this time. Uh, we ask, Lord, that you would, would bless their deliberations and their decision, decisions as to where you would have them serve in your kingdom. Lord, we bring all of these prayers confident that you hear and you answer each and every one. Amen. Please stand then as we bring all of our prayers together in the prayer which Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we also pray the prayer for grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us to safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Praise be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The congregation may be seated once again, and if you would turn back to hymn 431, I Walk in Danger All the Way, we sing stanzas five and six.
Once again, good morning. morning. Welcome to all of you. A number of things I wanted to to mention here. Uh, Just a reminder especially that uh, the Lenten season begins on Ash Wednesday. Uh, That's February 22nd, so that's coming up quickly here. Uh, it, it seems likely that we'll be having our services on Tuesdays and, and Wednesday evenings uh, in our tri-parish here. There still might be a slight possibility that if we could work it out the, in our schedule to have a, have a daytime service, midweek Lenten service. So if you have ideas of how we could work that uh, into our schedule, please let me know. Uh, also, just a reminder that uh, the, the Centennials for, uh, for Peace and Clark uh, is planned for this summer and also for Hill, here at Willow Lake Lutheran. Uh, there is a, a sign-up sheet for the, uh, if you'd like to help out on a Centennial Celebration Committee uh, to, to bring thoughts and, and ideas for, forward and so forth uh, to make plans for that. Uh, also a reminder that, uh, or this is probably new information for you, uh, the, our fellow Christians at St. Martin's in Watertown, the young people's group there, uh, is inviting uh, the young people from about a hundred mile radius around uh, Watertown to uh, another Wells Youth Night, and that's scheduled for Sunday, March 26th, actually starting in the afternoon at three o'clock. Uh, the first one they held there was in last, last Last November, they had more than more than 50 young people and and uh, quite a number of other uh, uh, leaders and so forth as well. Uh, but uh, p- please mark that on your calendar. Uh, also, we're planning uh, uh, to, to get started with a Bible information class uh, soon. So, if you know somebody who might be interested in that, or if you yourself are interested, please let me know. Uh, this afternoon is an opportunity at Martin Luther College, our Wells College of Ministry. The Wind Symphony is planning a sacred concert. Uh, it's at the Chapel of the Christ on, on campus, but it's also going to be live streamed. The, the web address is in the calendar uh, on, on page 11 in the bulletin if you're looking for that. Uh, just a couple of other things. Uh, I'll, I'll start with this. Uh, some of you have seen this already. We, I handed it out at, at uh, some meetings recently. It's a, a report from our uh, Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. And sometimes people ask, you know, what's, what's the purpose of belonging together with 1,250 other congregations? Uh, this gives a good overview of that. I think it's just excellently done here. Uh, I'd urge you to, you know, set aside a half hour and just, just kind of study through this and uh, it really gives a a great deal of of, uh, good information and uh, a lot of things there for you. A couple of other things, uh, well, especially for for parents, I suppose grandparents and so forth too. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with... uh, uh, what's called the Arch Books, which books for small children, uh, kind of rhyming Bible stories and things like that. Uh, one of our grandkids' favorites is called Jailhouse Rock. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with Elvis, but it's about the uh, Acts 16 that we heard about today. Uh, just uh, Some of them are just really excellent. Some are better than others, obviously. There's, I think, 150 different, different books. Uh, but if you're interested, uh, uh, you can talk to me about that. I also mentioned, uh, I'm not sure if it was last Sunday or maybe the Sunday before, uh, Pastor... Richard Lowersdorf uh, went home to glory. I think it maybe it was last Sunday was his funeral. Uh, anyway, he served for many years as the uh, first vice president of our Wisconsin Synod. Uh, but he, he was also, well, and a parish pastor. Uh, he served uh, as a parish pastor for many years as well. Uh, but he was also a very prolific and very gifted writer. Uh, this last week, I just happened to be in a, a thrift store and I saw one of the books, it's a, a daily devotion. Uh, that he wrote. Uh, if somebody is interested in, the, in it, I'll just leave it in, on the table in the back. Uh, but uh, just an, an excellent uh, devotional book and a uh, very gifted writer. So, uh, so he continues, uh, to, even as he is in glory, he's continuing to serve the church here, and here on earth uh, through, through his writings. If, if you read the Forward in Christ magazine or the predecessor of that, the Northwestern Lutheran, he often wrote in those uh, periods periodicals as well. Uh, 
I anyway just thought I would mention that to you. Uh, like I say, you can pick this up if you like. With that, uh, God be with you and uh, bless you. Uh, COVID has, has still been kind of spooking around in, in uh, our, our parish, tri-parish here. Uh, so I think maybe I'll refrain just for the sake of uh, being as safe as we can be, uh, for, refrain from shaking hands, but uh, 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 God be with you. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention. Uh, last Tuesday, the... Uh, the dual parish of St. Paul's in Henry and Bethlehem in Watertown met together with our district president and the circuit pastor as well uh, to, to see where, where they are, are going, where they can go in the future. Um, so the, the next step is uh, Beth, uh, yeah, Bethlehem in Watertown is planning to have congregational meetings and, and council meetings and voter, voters meetings and so forth. Uh, whatever decisions they, they make is obviously going to impact uh, St. Paul's in Henry and might it might possibly affect our tri-parish here as well. So uh, please keep them uh, in, your, in your thoughts and prayers as well. Just wanted to mention that too.